Welcome to Online Algebra 2. This is section 11-2, probability. So our objective for this section is to find the probability of an event using theoretical, experimental, and simulation methods. Uh, and what you should know about probability by the end is that the probability of an impossible event is zero, zero percent. The probability of a certain event is one, one percent. Otherwise, the probability of an event is a number between 0 and 1, if you write it as a number, or a percent between 0 and 100%. So, uh, there we go. So, probability measures how likely it is for an event to occur. And when you gather this data, when you when you do an experiment or when you do when you look at something and you look at the observations, we can calculate something called experimental probability. That one. So experimental probability and each observation is the experiment or an actual trial, the number of times you actually did something. And the probability of a, a, the experimental probability of an event is how many times it happens divided by the total number of trials, okay? And now this is not going to be, this is gonna be a little bit different than what we'll talk about next, which is theoretical probability. Experimental probability is what actually happens in your experiment. So, uh, of the 60 vehicles in a teacher's parking lot, there are 15 pickup trucks. So what is the experimental probability that a vehicle in the lot is a pickup truck? So we write, probability of a truck is equal to the number of trucks divided by the number of cars in the parking lot. So we get 0.25, which is 25%. Now that doesn't mean that, uh, that every that one out of four 25 percent of all cars are going to be pickup trucks it just happens to be that in this case in this parking lot 25 percent of the trucks of the cars are trucks a softball player got a hit in 20 of her last 50 times at bat what is the experimental probability when she will get another hit so the probability of a hit is going to be 20 out of 50, which is 0.4, which is 40%. Okay. Again, that doesn't mean that she's that this is going to be, she's going to get a hit 40% uh, all the time. It's just out of her last 50 times, uh, she got a hit 40% of the time. Sometimes actual trials are difficult or unreasonable to conduct. In these situations, you can estimate the experimental probability of an event by using a simulation. And a simulation is just a model of an event. So that's something like, oh, what's happening? There we go. That's something like uh, this problem. So on a multiple choice test, each item has four choices, but only one choice is correct. How can you simulate guessing the answers? What's the probability that you will pass the test guessing at least six out of 10 answers? So again, we, we don't wanna make up a bunch of uh, tests to try to figure out uh, what the probability of this is gonna be. Uh, what we can do is we can use a simulation. Uh, we can actually use a random number generator uh, and just generate a bunch of numbers, okay? And then here is what I did on a random integer generator, okay? So basically, there's four there's four questions on this on this test. Each uh, item has four choices, but only one choice is correct. So let's just say number one is correct, okay? So one is the correct answer. So what we're looking for is how many of these tests, each one has 10 questions, so each each row here has 10 uh, random numbers, one through four. Uh, did any of them actually get six ones? We got one, two, three, so no. One, no, no, no. One, 
two, three, four, five. This one had five. One, two, three, no. And that's a no, right? We want six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that one actually has six ones. So that is a passing uh, grade. No. One, one, two, three, four, five. This one had five, but that's a no. One, one, two, one, two, and three. Okay, so what is the probability that you will pass the test uh, from our simulation is going to be one out of one, two, three, four, five, six, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. One out of 15, which is going to be uh, 0.06 repeating, so 7%. So if you just guess, uh, and my random number generator uh, did that, uh, you're only going to pass 7% of the time. And my got it problem is what's the probability of passing a test if the score is 50% or better? So that means you only need five correct answers, five ones. Okay. So now the probability is going to be three out of 10, right? Because we have five, six, and five and or sorry three out of 15 because there's 15 trials so three out of 15 is 0.2 which is 20 percent okay so a little bit better uh so random number generators you can find this pretty easily on the internet or just google random number generators uh random.com i think it was or random.org uh to come up with something that can run a simulation for you so the set of all possible outcomes to an experiment or activity is called the sample space. When each outcome in the sample space has the same chance of occurring, the outcomes are equally likely outcomes. For one roll of a standard number cube, there are six equally likely outcomes in the sample space. Think about rolling a, a normal dice, right? Uh, math textbooks can say this, standard number cube, because uh, dice don't always have to have six sides. Uh, there are many, many, many different types of uh, dice. So when we say standard number cube, we're talking about a standard dice uh, numbered one through six. And when you roll it, there's an equal chance that you're gonna get any of the numbers on there, okay? So we can calculate then something called the theoretical probability as a ratio of outcomes, okay? So if the sample space has n equally likely outcomes and event A occurs in M of the outcomes, then the theoretical probability is M over N. How many times does it happen over uh, how many different possibilities are there? Okay. And so we can find the theoretical probability of each of these events. So the probability of getting a five on one roll of my standard number cube. So think about a dice, regular die, right? If you think about it, it only has one five on it and there's six sides. So because of that, the probability is one out of six for 0.1717%, six repeating. Okay. For part B, getting a sum of five on two standard number cubes, okay? So now we're gonna have to think about all the different ways that this is possible, okay? Well, all right, so if I think about, if I roll a, we can sort of uh, just think of different combinations of ways to make five. Uh, so that would be a one on the first dice, uh, a four on the second, right? That adds up to five. Uh, if I get, and no other combination, one and, and you can't add the second dice. There's no, it doesn't say greater than five. It just says sum of exactly five. Uh, so with a two on the first dice, that would be a three on the second. With a three on the first dice, that would be a two on the second. And with a four on the first dice, a one on the second, okay? So since there's six from the fundamental counting principle, since there's six choices for the first one and six choices for the second dice, uh, there are a total of 36 different probabilities or possibilities. So the probability of a sum of five is going to be four, one, two, three, four, 
out of 36, which was my total, okay? Which is, reduces to one over nine, but we get 0 0.11, which is 11%. Let's try the got it problem. What is the theoretical probability of getting a sum that is an odd number on one roll of two standard number cubes? Okay, let's think about all the different sum. And yeah, well, no, let's check it out. So we have a one and a one on the first one, two on the second, or one on the first, one on the second gives me two, but that gives me an odd number. That gives me an odd number. And that gives me an odd number. Okay, so a two and a one, a two and a three, a two and um, a five. So basically you see that there's going to be three uh, for each for each number, right? So it's gonna be a three and the three even numbers, uh, four and the four odd numbers and so on. So we can safely say that there are going to be um, 18 out of 36, which is going to be 50%. Without calculating the probability, is it more likely to get an even or an odd number on one roll of a standard number cube? Think about it. There are three even numbers. One, or sorry, two, four, and six. There are three odd numbers. One, three, and five. So they should, uh, it is neither more likely or less likely. <clears throat> it can be easier to use combinatorics to find theoretical probability rather than listing and counting. That's what we were just doing here. We were listing and counting all the different possible ways, right here, all the different possible ways to get this thing, to get a sum of five. That's good for something like a dice, which doesn't have that many options. But if there's something with a lot more options, uh, this technique of using combinatorics is maybe a little bit better. Uh, combinatorics include the fundamental counting principle and ways to count permutations and combinations. So, what is the theoretical probability of ex being dealt exactly two sevens in a seven in a five card hand from a standard 52 card deck, standard uh, deck of playing cards? Now, I'm pretty sure that we don't want to list out, okay, well, you can get two sevens and three aces, you can get two sevens, two aces and a king, right? So you can see that there's going to be a lot of possibilities. I don't wanna list them all out and count them because I would be here for a very long time. So remember that probability is gonna be the number of times what we want happens divided by the total number of possibilities, okay? So the probability of two sevens, is gonna be every combination of uh, every possible way we can get two sevens. Well, in a decade, when, I, when I'm playing a, a hand, when I'm playing cards, it doesn't matter when you get the two sevens, so the order doesn't matter, right? I can get two sevens first, I can get them second, I can get them spread out, it doesn't matter. So this is a combination. In a standard 52 card deck, there are four, sevens. So that would be four C and I want two of them. So out of these four, I want two times. Well, it doesn't matter what I have in the rest of my hand. Okay. But there are 48 cards left in the deck after these four sevens. And I want three of those over 52 C five. Okay. This is every possible hand on the bottom. This is the hand that I want on the top. And the reason why I didn't want to count these all out is because uh, this is 103,776 over, there are 2 point, almost 6 million, uh, 598, 960 possible uh, different 
five card hands in a standard 52 card deck, which gives me 0.039, right, which is about 44%, 4%. About four percent. Um, so you know, four percent. You're going to see two sevens. Not going to happen that often, uh, but much different than all four sevens, a four of a kind. So now, using the same, the probability of four sevens is going to be four C four. Get all of them times 48 C one more divided by 52 C five again. Okay. So four, four C four is, is one. Okay. It's Cause we're just going to get all of those 48 C1 is 48. So basically we have 48 over this number right here, uh, the 2.6 million. So divided by 52 C5 gives me a 0. 0.00018. Okay, so this is a 0.0018%. So it is very, very rare that you would get four sevens in just a five card hand. Now this doesn't include like a real card game where you would maybe give up some cards and get another set, but uh, getting four sevens just off of five cards is extremely unlikely, okay? one in every 54,000 hands that would happen. Uh, geometric probability, area. Sometimes you can use areas to find the theoretical probability, okay? So a batter strike zone, zone depends on the height and stance of the batter. What is the geometric probability that a baseball thrown at random within the batter strike zone would be a high inside strike, would go there, Oops. right into the red part. Now, usually pitchers don't throw things at random. They usually aim, but that's not really not what this question is asking. We're saying, what's the chance that a random thing would go into this box? Well, that would be the area of this red box divided by the area of the yellow box. So the area of the red box, like sums width, is four times six. So probability of high and inside is going to be 24, uh, 4 times 6, divided by 17 times 22, 374, which gives me 0 0.06, so that is a 6% chance of uh, random balls going into this strike zone. Okay, so experimental probability is only good for what you actually count. Theoretical probability, you can figure out because you know the probability of the thing, like a cube. Uh, and simulation, uh, you would have to actually run a test uh, with a random number generator or something else. Uh, but in all cases, probability is how many things you observe or how many things you want divided by the total number of ways it could happen. And that is 11-2 probability.